Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Rick Eflund with the Show Me Institute. I want to welcome you to our event tonight. We're excited about this. This is uh, National School Choice Week, as you know, and that is what, in large measure, this documentary is about, and that is, in large measure, what we're all about at the Show Me Institute. So thank you very much for coming. Let's roll the documentary, and we'll see what you think. Okay, Scott, you are chairman of the House Committee on Education. What might we expect in this legislative session in terms of reform, in terms of choice? I think that our current Speaker of the House, uh, Steve Tilley, has uh, made a couple of public commitments, a couple of public promises, and uh, two of the things that we're going to be looking at, uh, one is ending the practice of social promotion, and that seems kind of like a no-brainer, that, that we shouldn't be pushing kids through the process that can't read on grade level or can't perform on grade level. Um, and we have a statute in the state of Missouri that says that we can't do that, but there's no teeth in it. So we want to go back, put some teeth in that, make sure that we're holding uh, educators accountable um, if they are pushing kids through the process. I think a bigger thing that, that we've committed to do is actually to remove uh, teacher tenure, remove the practice of teacher tenure in the state of Missouri, and I think that that's vitally important. Uh, those are the two things that we've publicly committed to do uh, on, on the Missouri House side. I think that we're going to have some serious conversations about uh, topics such as open enrollment, charter schools. Um, we're going to actually, I, I just had referred to my committee today, actually a, a piece of legislation that would allow the citizens of Missouri to consider whether or not we would like to do vouchers in the state. Uh, so these are topics that have been kind of pulled off the table in previous years, but they're going to get some serious discussion this year. Okay, and I meant to recognize everybody here uh, earlier, and we wanted to get on with the documentary very quickly. Senator Cunningham, thank you very much for joining us, and Cole McNary, I was teasing you about the uh, popcorn, but it's good for you to be here too. Clem Smith is here as well, Representative Clem Smith. Thank you. This comes from uh, a member of the audience. Charter schools seem like a good idea, but still the question remains, how to reform public schools? We see competition in, in every aspect of our lives. You have a choice every day, you know, uh, where are you going to go get gas uh, in your vehicle? Where are you going to go grocery shopping? Um, you know, who's your cell phone provider? We have those choices and we make comparisons and we choose what's best for us or, or what's accessible to us. Um, we don't have that choice in education. As uh, I believe one of the gentlemen said in the film, we have a monopoly uh, in education and we draw a box you know, around some neighborhoods and we say, okay, this is where you're gonna go to school and you don't get a choice in the matter. And I think that's ridiculous that we have that in one aspect of our lives and that that's somehow acceptable to a lot of people. Um, to go back and, and touch on, on teachers unions and, and are they powerful? Um, they are powerful. I, you know, I, I had, I don't even know how many folks stop by my office this, uh, this week from actually one of the, one of the local unions, AFT, um, you know, to, to visit with me and, you know, to get any work done, I have to leave my office regularly because I've got teachers unions and different, you know, administrator organizations or school board organizations coming by telling me how awful my ideas are and they can't seem to tell me why they're bad for kids. They just tell me it makes their lives more complicated or more difficult, their jobs are harder. Uh, but they can't tell me why what I'm doing is bad for kids. And that's just uh, frustrating to me. But, you know, we've got a lot of legislators who they defer to their superintendents or they defer to the leaders of their local teachers unions and they say, okay, you know, these, these guys want to do some crazy charter school thing. What do you think about charter schools? They call their superintendent. superintendent says, charter schools are bad. They destroy public schools. Do you like public schools? Well, yeah, I like public schools. I'm not against public schools, so I'm against charters. And, and, and it's really that simple. It's a matter of education. And uh, Tashara, you know, helped me out a lot this week. I see uh, Senator Cunningham in the back. We sponsored some screenings uh, this week in Jefferson City for our uh, legislative colleagues waiting for Superman, the lottery, um, you know, held a press conference. We're trying to educate our colleagues so that the voice of the teachers unions or these other education groups maybe aren't as strong or aren't as powerful because we're going to have colleagues that are actually educated and understand the issues. 
Okay, here's another question. It has been alleged that statistics show that charter schools in Missouri do not have a better rating on tests. Is there any truth in this? Sure. And there are some that do have better um, scores on tests. And I believe that charter schools that aren't doing our children justice should be closed. And, the, and that the uh, State Board of Education should have the authority to close them. Um, anything that's not benefiting our children, we should do away with and find something better for, to benefit them. So actually, the, the bill that I'm going to file in a couple of weeks to expand charter schools also expands the accountability of the sponsors and for the charter schools themselves to make sure that they're delivering for our children and our parents. Would you favor Missouri having a trigger provision that would let parents force choice from a failing school? I, I certainly would. Uh, I actually signed on to co-sponsor legislation that would do exactly that. We've seen it in California and we've seen it, uh, I believe, in the, in the Compton neighborhood in California where the parents actually stood up and said, we want the school closed down, we want to do something different here, and they put that in effect. Uh, Representative Tim Jones uh, from Eureka, who's actually the House Majority Floor Leader, uh, is filing that legislation. And as I said, I have signed on to co-sponsor it. It will be getting a hearing in my committee uh, shortly. Okay. Who can break a union's grip on a district? The community. The community can do it. Uh, if the community bands together, they support superintendents, they find folks to get on the school boards, and they actually turn things around and they put pressure, they put pushback on the unions, the community can. Here's one from a member of the audience. A friend of mine likes to say, government should no more own schools than they should own churches or newspapers. What's wrong with his logic? I, I think it's interesting that we have even the concept of school districts. All that we have guaranteed ourselves in the state of Missouri is the fact that we will have a publicly funded school system. It doesn't say that the money has to go to a school district or any sort of governance. It just says that there is public funding for education. Um, that money can go through the individual, a la a voucher system. Uh, it can go to the parents so that they have that choice. That is a publicly funded system. It's your taxpayer dollars going to the government and the government saying, here is your money to provide an education. Um, I think it's ludicrous that we actually have a district system. That's the system that we have to work within. Uh, that's something that was decided, you know, quite a few hundred years before, uh, before I was around. But, um, you know, this is something that, that is kind of a ludicrous system, and I think it's a system that's uh, uh, maybe a backward thinking type of system. And just a, a thought that I had, not necessarily on that question, but along that same line, you know, we've been thinking the same way about education for the last God knows how many hundred years, um, that there are, our kids go to school from seven to three, that they go to school from September to May, because back before I was born, they had to be out in the summers to help their fathers and mothers and families till the farms. And, you know, we don't have that system anymore. Um, uh, or at least in, in some of the urban areas. So I don't know why we can't start thinking out of the box of being innovative like we have with everything else, with our cell phones, with our technology, with how we work and how we telecommute. We have to start making sure that we can apply some of those same principles to education as well. So, final thoughts tonight on the documentary that we saw here and how, if in any way, it relates to our area, our state. This is actually my second time seeing the cartel. Uh, Scott gave me a copy to view beforehand, so I wouldn't be too shocked if I see it this evening. And um, it didn't work because I was shocked again. Um, the, I think we need to take a hard look at restructuring how we deliver education to our children. Um, and with the money we receive, uh, the different levels of bureaucracy, where that money is going, I, I don't know if um, our school districts are being as transparent as they can be, um, but we are in an age of, of information overload and, and we can get any kind of information we want on anything. So I think that 
um, our uh, education system shouldn't be the sacred cow anymore not to be able to be transparent with us as, as far as how they're spending our dollars. I think first and foremost we just need to change our perspective on education and I think that that folks outside of education probably have a better perspective than those that work within it and, and as a former public school teacher I know that you kind of get lost and, and just like we all do we start to develop you know our world around our work because it's a part of our lives but when we look at education I think we need to look at what is ultimately best for kids are we doing what's best for kids or are we doing what's best for you know teachers because their organizations are out there talking about it are we doing what's best for superintendents because they talk about the unpredictability you know if we were to do an open enrollment type situation or vouchers you know there's unpredictability um, well, there's predictability in some regard, and that is that if you're providing a quality education, you're going to receive kids. If you're not, you're going to lose kids. Well, all of this tonight has been very thought-provoking. I think we can all agree on that, regardless of where we stand on issues such as school choice. I want to thank both of you very much for being our panelists and uh, bearing with me and the rest of us. And for all of us at the Shoney Institute, thank you so much for your participation tonight, and we hope to see you again in another forum.